Hey. So we're we're we're, so, we're glad to have the uh, Eddie Van Halen in the, honor of the, the the great Jimmy D great. here. And uh, yeah, if, if we could just can we get a few minutes of your time, maybe? Yeah, to, yeah, yeah. To, I, to, to, I got a few. I got a hard out at eleven, but yeah, we can do that. So uh, may I even ask, like, who? I guess who inspires you, legendary musically musician world. Uh, I'm going to say Elton John, I'm going to say Billy Joel, uh, I'm going to say Bruce Hornsby, um, you know, regular guys. Okay, okay. <clears throat> we're, we're, uh, you draw yeah. upon them, I, yeah, a yeah, lot, yeah, quite I mean, frequently? Yeah, it's just stuff I've been listening to since I was a kid, you know, it's, it's kind of old music right now, yeah. but, uh, you know, Do I you like ever, it. You ever get a chance uh, to meet them? Uh, no, I'd love to. Never met I'd any of those I went to a Billy Joel concert once, uh, but uh, that was it. Yep. Never had a chance to meet those legends. No, right no. no. Uh, where you've been touring? Uh, lately, St. John's Church. St. John's Church. <laughs> where, where, where at? Uh, um, Little Shoot. Oh, I think yeah, I know a yeah. thing or two about yeah, that place. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Exactly. Okay. Yep. Um, are you currently touring off? No, the whole COVID thing, you know, put put a damper on a lot of our big, you know, stadium dates that we had around yep. the world. So yep. you yep. just kind of laying back right now. Yeah, yeah, adjusting. So, how does Jimmy D lay back uh, outside of music? Would, how would... I lay back? Uh, well, I'm chilling with my dudes, you know, chilling out and just kind of playing some video games here yeah, and there, yeah. playing some video games and, uh, uh, you know, that type of thing. So, yeah, I mean, you know, try not to, I try not to party too hard, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, li 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 are you still able to connect honest. with your fans? Of course. Yeah. Of course. Yeah, yeah. there's, there's Zoom calls. There's you know. There's there's Facebook. I don't know if anybody uses Facebook yeah, anymore. Yeah, it's yeah, kind yeah. of for adults. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, there's that. There's that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You live in the virtual world like the rest of us are. Right. 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 Okay. Doing the best we can. You know. Yeah. Still rocking out though. Got my trusty little. That, something new I'm working I, on. I must say, that is really something, and, and you, you yourself really are something too. Yeah. Uh, uh, you're, you're a card. Has anybody ever told you that? You're a, a card? card? Yeah, a card. A card. Yeah, yeah. One man party. Well, you yeah. know. I have been known. Yeah. <laughs> well, uh, legendary Jimmy D joining us uh, on the set today, and uh, we're very right. grateful to, right. to have you. I know that your time is Good. valuable, so uh, Good. Good. thanks Good. for being here. All right, buddy. See you later. All right. Music. Welcome to the broadcast. You know, there are many famous musicians who have become legends over the years yep, with their incredible impact uh, that they have had on the world through their music. You know, each generation seems to have their fair share of iconic musicians who stand, upon, stand above the mm -hmm. others and have left a lasting impression on their fans. Yep. Fans who often listen and cherish their music for the rest of their lives, but even past the lives of these Absolutely. musicians, right? You bet. Since they've passed, there are people who continue to remain legends well past their death. You know, there is one legendary person who has continued to impact the world thousands of years after his death. You know, he wasn't a famous musician, though. Hmm. But he was famous for what he taught and what he lived. Ah. He left a lasting impression on countless lives and he continues to impact more even yet today. You know who we're talking about, Jimmy D? George Washington. George Washington. Well, he's done that. But today, we're not talking about George Washington right. or even Abraham Lincoln or Dr. Martin Luther King. We're talking about Jesus. I'm guessing. That yeah, yeah, Jesus. yeah. This week, we are going to explore the evidence that shows us that Jesus was a real person who lived in a particular time and a particular place. Mm -hmm. We're going to learn more about Jesus Christ today. Good. So before do we it. do, a few questions, I guess. Let's, let's kind of have a little bit of fun with this, sure. all right? So sure. shoot from the hip a little bit. All right. Uh, you know, what, what sport do you think would have been Jesus' favorite? Uh, probably golf. Golf. Why? I'm going to say golf yeah. because... You know what? There's a lot of sports that test your physical ability, and of course golf does that, but golf, I think, really tests your patience, and it, t it tests your entire approach to the game. Yeah? I think he'd have been good at golf. Yeah, I think I'm going to agree with, uh, with you 100% on good. that. I yep. was going to say golf as well, and, and the whole patience thing, you know, because every other sport, uh, 
I don't think you need as much patience as, well, as with golf. I, you know, I feel least like a Christian sometimes when I'm golfing. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> so, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a so test something of something that's going to challenge us, yeah, yeah, it's yeah. going to be golf. not really living the fruits of the Spirit so. while you golf, are you? <laughs> <laughs> Working on it. So, uh, I guess, uh, moving on from sports to food, mm -hmm. right? Uh, what kind of food do you think Mary would have served on Jesus' birthday? Kind of food. I got to go with fish. Fish, I yeah. I got to go with yeah, fish. Yeah, I got to go with Seems fish. like the thing of the times. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Uh, maybe a perch fry. Maybe a good walleye with a, a good batter. Yeah, something caught from the Sea Sounds of Galilee. Good. You bet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Some ends of fries. Mm -hmm. Got to have good fries. Tater tots. Oh, yeah. yeah. That's my guess. You know, okay, so then back to music. All right. What band do you think would Jesus like to listen to the most? What band? Band, yeah. I think he'd listen to hip-hop. Hip-hop? Yep. Okay. I think he'd listen to hip-hop. Just the upbeat. Well, because hip-hop, it, it, it's, you know, it can be, it can be, it can have a great message. Yeah. Okay? So you can really steer that message with him. That's my thought. Okay. And yeah. that's, I'm, I'm a Hamilton fan, so I, I've enjoyed that music, and so my guess would be hip-hop. Okay. Think. Okay. All right. Interesting. Yeah. All right. I saw you uh, when you came to my office yesterday. You had your... Latte that I kind of made fun of you for. Okay, your pumpkin, pumpkin spice, spice latte. latte. Uh, what would Jesus's coffee order have been? If you're gonna buy me latte coffee, yeah. What it, what, what would his been his order? Yeah. What do you think? Um, I don't know. What do you think? Uh, you know, I think Jesus probably would have liked a good chai latte. Chai latte. Yeah, All right. Chai I'm gonna latte. go with you on just because I like saying it. I'm gonna go. Okay. Last but not least, what would have been Jesus's favorite TV show? Would have been his favorite TV show? Yeah, yeah. What, do you, what, what TV show would he watch? Parks and Rec. Park and Rec. All right. <laughs> Parks and Rec. You know, if I were to answer that one, um, I'm going to say Jesus would probably like the show This Is Us on NBC. If I was a family, us. it's okay. very inspirational, yeah. motivational. Um, all right. Just follows the challenges. And, I'll go with you on that. And, uh, family encounters. You ever watched this? Oh, Dancing with the Stars. Dancing with the Could Stars. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, maybe so, that one too. It's a thought. So let's pose a question to, to you guys as, as our audience. You know, what musicians from your generation do you think will become legends? Let's kind of think about that. Musicians right now, mm -hmm, current mm -hmm. ones. Mm -hmm. What ones do you think are going you know, to become legends? I see, I'm, I'm, I'm a little old to talk about this generation from the standpoint because, uh, you know, I'm seeing we're starting to see, you know, like the Mariah Careys. We're starting to see the, uh, 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 the Celine Dion's and things like that. those are those are legends. I'm I'm a big Michael Bublé fan, um, and so those guys they're gonna I think they're gonna become legends. I'm not as hip on what's happening right now. And okay. So okay. So probably Beyonce. Okay. Okay. Beyonce. You know, and I'm not as hip on that style. Your 95.9 mm -hmm. your pop style. I'm not as right. hip on that. I'm more of a tend to be a country guy myself. Okay. Um, you know, I, I tend to gravitate towards 2000s country because a lot of stuff today just doesn't resonate with me. But uh, I, I think if I look at legends, as far as for country music, you know, Alan Jackson. Uh, yeah, to me, definitely. somebody who definitely is going to transcend yep. George time. George Strait. George Strait, Toby Heath, Heath Ray Tim Travis. McGraw. Yeah. Right? Okay. Th those people. I'll so, go with you on that. So I guess, you know, if we look at the greatest legends of all time, right, we've talked a lot about musical legends today. You know, the biggest influencer that has ever lived, those music legends that we've talked about, right, they've had a lot of influence on, yep. on, yep. on their area, right, of, of, of music and, and on their fans. Right. But there's a greater influencer who's lived, well, still is living, right? Alive and well. Absolutely. Yeah. Who stands above all of, all of those people. Yes. Yes. You know, roughly 2,000 years ago, a man was born who changed the world. He's a central figure of human history. His name's Jesus. Jesus. Yeah, right here, gazing upon us today. What are they? Yeshua. Yeah. Yeshua. Yeah. Was, uh, yep. Jesus. Some languages. <laughs> hey, Sue? You want to share a little bit about uh, Jesus with us? Over the past 2,000 years, countless books and music have been written about Jesus Christ, and he is still the central figure of most songs that have ever been written. 
The very birth of Jesus even impacts our calendar. When we say 2020, we are referring to Jesus' birth. We're saying that Jesus was born 2,020 years ago. You know, while history is full of remarkable people with amazing inventions, uh, there is nothing, there is nothing that compares to the impact that Jesus has had on our world. You know, Jesus is a real person who lived in a specific time, in a specific place. He is the most influential person who's ever lived. He's the most significant person in history. We're going to share some historical evidence with you shortly. All right, so I'm going to share with you. We're going to. I'm going to share with you a little bit of but I'm going to share the, a little bit of the gospel here. So All right. Luke chapter 2, verses 2 through 7, coming straight at you. The nativity scene here behind us. Mm -hmm. This was the first enrollment when Quirinius was the governor of Syria. So all went to be enrolled, each to his own town. And Joseph too went up from Galilee, from the town of Nazareth to Judea, to the city of David that is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and family of David, to be enrolled with Mary, his betrothed, who was with child. While they were there for some time, the time came for her to have her child, and she gave birth to her firstborn son. She wrapped him in swaddling clothes, and laid him in a manger because there was no room for him in the end. All is, is calm. calm. All is so Jesus was born to a Jewish woman named Mary. He was born in Bethlehem at the time of the great king Herod and Caesar Augustus. Jesus was a carpenter by trade. But he died by crucifixion under Pontius Pilate during the reign of the Emperor Tiberius. Now, this is from Matthew. Yeah, so much of the information uh, that we have about the life and existence of Jesus does come to us from our Bible. However, there are multiple <coughs> pieces of historical evidence outside of the Bible from secular sources that have no motive in spreading Christianity that share that Jesus existed and proved that Jesus did exist and did, did share his loving message uh, with the world. So, while I'm reading this next one, could you take that jacket off? It's a little big for you. All right. <laughs> <laughs> so, some, so, some historians and writers who lived during the first 100 years after Jesus' birth, uh, for example, Flavius, Josephus, Tacitus, Pili the Younger, uh, Suetonius, they made mention of Jesus in their works. Now, they were referring to his death and his followers. Now, this is significant because it's historical data uh, from the first 100 years after Jesus' death. And people were still alive at that time, and they knew Jesus personally. So, uh, you know, it's, it's important to have history from people that actually knew him. Yeah, exactly. All right, I'm going to share with you a little bit from one of the historians that you just, you just shared with us. Flavius Josephus. Boy, wouldn't you like to go back over 2,000 years and hang out with a guy named Flavius Josephus? It's good rap. Here's what he had to say right. about Jesus, All okay? Right. Lay it on me. So, about this time, there lived Jesus, a wise man, if indeed one ought to call him a man. Mm -hmm. For he was one who performed surprising deeds and was a teacher of truth. Okay. He won over many Jews and many of the Greeks. He was the Christ. And when upon the accusation of the principal men among us, Pilate had condemned him to a cross. Those who had first come to love him did not cease. Mm. They didn't go away. Mm. He appeared to them, spending a third day restored to life. For the prophets of God had foretold these things and a thousand other marvels, marvels about him. Could have been marvels. Yeah. Okay. And the tribe of the Christians, so called after him, has still to this day not disappeared. All right. And while there's been some controversy throughout history surrounding the works and teachings of Jesus, 
A legitimate historian has never claimed that he did not exist. Exactly. Jesus was a real man who lived in a specific time, a specific place, a specific part of the world in a specific time in history. All right. We're looking at a lot of history of Jesus, right? So yep. maybe let's yep. take a break and go back to Jesus was a, is a great influ was a great influencer, continues to be a great influencer. But let's, let's look at some other influencers of people of influence in our society, right? Okay. So right. Um, here's what we're going to do. Play a little game, right. okay? So a question for you real quick is, you know, what does it take to become an influencer? And on average, how many followers do the biggest influencers <clears throat> on social media have? I want you to just kind of think about that a little bit. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. We're going to play a game. All right. All right? So we're going to talk about... I'm going to lose this game. ...the top five social media followers on both Instagram and Twitter. Okay. Okay? All right. Are you ready? I don't know any of them. You don't know oh, any I know a couple. Yeah, I All know right. a few. <laughs> so here we go. Number five. All right. Number five is... Selena Gomez. Gomez. I know Selena Gomez. 194 million followers on Instagram. Wow. 194 million. Crazy. Selena Gomez. Uh, wow. I hope she says good stuff. Yeah. Num number four, Kylie, Kylie Jenner. Jenner. 196 million followers. Okay. Do we, we all rock? know this. Do you the smell rock. what The Rock's cooking? That's right. Eh? Absolutely. The Rock. 199, 199 million, million coming in at number three. Okay. This is Instagram. All right. Okay. Number two, Ariana Grande. Ariana Grande. Just over 200 million followers. Got a great so, voice. Number one. I don't know this person. Number at all. one. And I didn't until, yeah, I had to do a little bit of research. Hopefully you guys do, or maybe you do. Cristiano Ronaldo at 238 million followers. Soccer. Soccer. Soccer okay. player. Football. I do I not football, yes, in yes. some areas of the world. I do not know much more about him than that. Huh. So, so those are the most influential people in regards to Instagram. Okay. Should we go to Twitter? Sure. All right. Yeah, you, you know many. Sure. Let's see. Let's see. Some of them will cross over to Twitter. All right. So All yeah, right. Cristiano Ronaldo has 88 million. So yeah. he's number five. Yeah, on Twitter. Okay. Rihanna. Rihanna. 98.6 million. Followers. Okay, that's yeah. Twitter. All right. Next, Katy Perry, 108. Uh, is she the one? Baby, you're a fire your work. Yeah. Right. That's Katy Perry. Yeah. Right? Okay. Yeah. Sorry yeah. that I had to say. Yep. Yeah. That's okay. That's sad. <laughs> uh, I know. Yeah, yeah. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, guys. So we had to. Yeah. Uh, be, yeah. Ooh, yeah. Better not. Be, right. Be, be, okay. Justin All right. Now I'm glad to see this next one. I'm really glad to see this next one. Go. Yep. Go. Yeah. Barack Obama. Barack Obama. Yep. 123.2 million followers mm -hmm. Good. on Twitter. Good. So these are the most influential people of Instagram and Twitter. But you know what I find interesting is. You know, Jesus began his ministry with no followers. And as he started to travel and preach and perform miracles, he invited 12 men right. to be his apostles. Right. As his disciples went forth to spread the good news of Jesus Christ and his gospel message, his following grew even more. Absolutely. And according to a Pew Research report from 2015, Christianity is still the world's largest religion. Of nearly 7 billion people on earth, about 2.5 billion people identify as Christians. There's about 1.8 billion people who identify as Muslim and 1.2 billion people who do not affiliate with any religion. Yeah. You know what stands out about that to me, Jimmy D, looking at these facts that you just read? Uh, 2.5 billion Christians in the world. That's a Large number. It's hard to even wrap my brain around. Yeah. Almost half of them are Catholic. Really? Almost half. 1.2 okay. billion Catholics mm -hmm. worldwide. Sure. Almost half, about half of Christians wow. are Catholic. You are a part of something. When I look at that 1.2 billion Catholics, we are, are a part of something as followers of Jesus Christ so much yep. bigger than ourselves. But truly, when you look at the numbers, it proves it, right? Yep. And the next paragraph here is, Jesus' influence didn't end when he died. Rather, his Twitter account really grew because his following grew. Uh, there are many great people who influenced the world and celebrated after their death. 
but there's something different about Jesus, okay? He claimed that he is God, and this sets him apart from everybody else, okay? So making him, the, this made him the most important person, the, the biggest movement that, uh, you know, to be considered. Yeah, period. exactly. You know, it, you can't lie. The, the, the effect that Jesus had on the world is nothing short of remarkable. A man who lived thousands of years ago is still remembered, followed, and loved. Jesus con continues to impact the lives of billions of people. Absolutely. There are countless aspects of our daily lives that have been impacted by Jesus, such as the home we find ourselves in, or the diocese or the parish that, or the church we go to, right? The priests who give their lives and serve the church, the countless nonprofit religious organizations that minister to those in need. Exactly. I mean, the list would go on and on and yeah. on. Every aspect uh, of our life has truly been impacted. So show us a map. Jesus Christ. So we're going to take a look here. You know, right. uh, you know, here we've got a, a map of Wisconsin and in, in Little Chute, right? Where Little Chute, Wisconsin is located. I think kind of more of the Midwest. Yeah, but, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe a larger and scope then the of Mid Midwest. East. <laughs> yeah, and then the Middle East, right? Midwest and then uh, Middle East. But uh, if you see there a map of you know Israel, Jerusalem, where Jesus did much of his preaching. Mm -hmm. The point that we want to make to you in showing you, just like Little Shoot, Wisconsin is a real place where our parish is located, right? Jesus Christ, too, preached in a real place mm -hmm. and ministered in a real place. And, and you know what? You can go there today. You can go there yet today. Yep. And just like we're a part of a real place here in, in Little Shoot, Wisconsin, Jesus Christ, too, was a part of a real place during his public ministry here on earth, mm -hmm. right? Yep. So a few questions uh, that, we're, that we're gonna pose to you guys here. First one that we'd like for you to, to discuss or think about if you're watching by yourself. So if you could have been born in any place in the world, where would you choose? What about you, Jimmy D? What would you choose? I just gotta go with where I where I am. Where I am. I yeah. know it's tough to say sometimes, right? You know. Um, how do how do you say anything other than that? Yeah, yeah, I know exactly. But so. you know, uh, Australia would be kind of cool. I don't know. Yeah. Land down under. Okay, mate. All right. Another question considered. Have you ever considered whether or not Jesus was a real historical person? You mean, did we land on the moon? <laughs> Yeah. Or is the earth flat? Yeah, but, but I mean, have you ever thought in, in, in learning about Jesus Christ and coming to faith development and going to church, have you ever thought, you know, maybe for a second in your head, gosh, is, did, did this Jesus really exist? Mm -hmm. Was he a real person? Has that ever crossed your mind? Yeah, yeah. It has mine. Yep. It has, you know. Think about that. Yeah. Think about that. Yeah. All right, so the next question is, when thinking about Jesus and his life, what difference does it make for you to see the places where Jesus lived and visited? I mean, does that help lock things in a little bit yeah, more? Yeah. So. It, 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 for me, says, just like I live in Little Shoot, Wisconsin, um, that's where Jesus mm -hmm. did his public ministry. It kind of it gives it a place, a concrete place for me sure. to be able to see. And I think a lot about, well, I won't go into this, but I think a lot about, you know, the messaging of the times and, and, and the culture of the times you know, what was going on at that time and why, why it all happened the way it did. So uh, something to think about. I yeah. mean, oh, I, yeah. I, because, you know, what types of words would be coming out of his mouth today or what kind of Twitter account would he have? So yeah, just think, think yeah. about Yeah, that would look a little differently, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, so even though Jesus lived in a different place and time uh, than we currently do, what influence has he had on your life? Man, that's a big question. It's a big question, and that changes every single day. I yeah. think as we as we grow older, you yeah. know. Um, I think when you know when, when we're younger, we hear a lot about him. Okay, so there's a hearing about, right? Um, and as we get older, we start to experience him more personally. You know, a lot of it, unfortunately, I think, starts with trials and tribulations. When yeah. we have trials and tribulations, we go to him, yeah. and then we seek that. But then, uh, as we kind of get past that, sorry, I don't mean to preach here, but as we get past that, then we start to see him in nature, in beauty, and we start to see him and experience him in, in everything. So life, in everything. So you're saying, kids, life does slow down, 
right? And allow you to be able to see that. But, you know, right. I, I, if I just look at one thing, Jimmy D, kids, uh, my moral compass, just that, mm -hmm. Jesus Christ has impacted that for me every day. And what I do, and, and I know I fall short all the time, but just in try, how I try to just live as a person uh, and treat other people and interact with other people, uh, from that, I draw upon you know my faith in Jesus Christ. Yep. I, I would just say one you know aspect of my life, although I fall short all the time. Right. Still, and everyone is going to experience him differently. Uh, his influence is going to be different on every single person. Yeah. Because everybody's lives are different. Yeah. Right. Exactly. So, in, go ahead. So we have spent this faith development session exploring the fact that Jesus was a real historical person. We have seen where he was born, where he grew up. We have identified the places where he met his friends, performed incredible miracles, died and was buried, rose from the dead, and ascended into heaven. But Jesus' influence and power is not limited to just that particular time in history, you know, like we talked about. You know, uh, Jesus is not a legend who just lived then and there. He's, he's here and now. And that's, that's exciting. That's way cool. So the stories of Scripture happened in a particular time and place, but they can transform our lives in this very moment. We're going to take some time now in prayer to visualize ourselves in the story of Scripture so that it's not only someone else's story from long ago, but it's our personal story right here, right now. So what we want to do is, is I'm just going to read some Scripture, and I'm going to invite Jimmy D to kind of to, to participate too uh, as well. But I'm going to read uh, some scripture uh, to you. And what I would like for you to do is I just want you to reflect on the scripture. And I want you to put yourself into the scripture passage like you are there as this is happening. Okay. okay? I believe this is from the Gospel of Matthew. And as Jesus passed on from there, two blind men followed him, crying out, Son of David, have pity on us. When he entered the house, the blind men approached him, and Jesus said to them, Do you believe that I can do this? Yes, Lord, they said to him. Then he touched their eyes and said, Let it be done for you according to your faith. And their eyes were opened. Jesus warned them sternly, See that no one knows about this. But they went out and spread the word of him throughout all of the land. It's kind of be thinking about, you know, being there when that happened, Jesus the healer, right? Mm -hmm. Okay? Mm -hmm. And now I want to just maybe quickly read it a second time. And I want you to think about it a little bit differently this time. As I read it just a second time, I want you to, to have it wash over you almost like a prayer. Okay? And I want you to talk to Jesus about what this passage can reveal to you in your life. Okay? So I'll wash over you like a prayer, but ask Jesus as I'm reading, what from this passage can Jesus reveal into your life? Okay? And as Jesus passed on from there, two blind men followed him, crying out, Son of David, have pity on us. When he entered the house, the blind men approached him, and Jesus said to them, Do you believe that I can do this? Yes, Lord, they said to him. Then he touched their eyes and said, let it be done for you according to your faith. And their eyes were opened. Jesus warned them sternly, See that no one knows about this. But they went out and spread the word of him throughout all the land. So Jimmy D, what, what, what does that reveal to you? To me, I, the, the first question that he asks is, do you believe that I can do this? Do you believe that I can do this? And if our answer to that is yes, then we believe the entire gospel. Yeah. You know, to me that's exciting because then the physical happened because of their belief, right? The miracle happened and that can happen in our lives today, right here and now. Yeah. It does. It happens in our lives all the time. In, in my life because, because I believe it's going to happen. Yeah. Uh, and so he says, then he says, let it be done to you according to your faith. And 
it's, it it's according, yeah, I yeah. mean, what more do you need to say? The only thing I don't know is why does he tell them not to go tell people? I know, I kind of <laughs> look at that last question. Like, it's almost like when your parents tell you not to do something and what yeah. ends up happening. <laughs> Maybe you go, that was it. You go and do that? Yeah, like, he knows human nature. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. For my sister, one of her kids, Lila, uh, she was two. They would say, Lila's not going to eat her dinner. Lila can't do that. Well, they wanted her to do that, right? right. So she would do the exact opposite of that. Absolutely. But yeah, that stuck out to me. Like, why would you tell them to not go tell? Yeah. But for, for me, Jimmy D, it was you know, kind of what washed over me, what I feel Jesus is revealing to, to me. Uh, looking at the scripture from Matthew is the healing doesn't just occur here mm -hmm. 2000 you know no, over exactly. 2000 years ago no, no. This, this healing of the two blind men this isn't something yep. we just read about in the gospel and oh yep. healing happened so long ago that doesn't happen anymore today we just read about that in the bible yep no jesus is revealing i i believe to me yep and and possibly each and every one of us here too that that same healing those miracles happen all the time you just have to see them yep and, you, and yeah and, and it, that's the big thing is do you want to be healed yeah yes and if the question is yes yes or do you want this problem resolved yes do you believe that i can do it do you believe that you can do it because yeah. i live in you yeah yes do you Boom. yeah so Boom. question you know we've learned Power. about historical jesus today right but right you know, do you believe that Jesus can do that for you? Yeah. Do you believe that Jesus can work wonders in your life? So, you know, as we finish today, just to reflect and, and to kind of recap, we've talked about legends, right? Yeah. Uh, we had a, a, a musical legend enter our stage at the start. Oh, wait, oh, he's coming back. That's right. Right? And we've talked about what makes a legend, right? Those <laughs> musical legends, they have impact long after their time. But then that transition to Jesus. Yeah. You know, Jesus is more than a legend, kids. Yeah. You know, over 2,000 years, people have drawn upon the name of Jesus Christ, no doubt, for healing, for miracles. For over 2,000 years, people have gone to Jesus in their, in their joy, in their excitement, but also in their, their sadness and their sorrow and their pain. People have drawn strength from the name of Jesus Christ. Yep. You know, and, and, and there is no doubt uh, in that. So our goal in this is to continue to learn more about Jesus and, and learn more about this, this man who, yes, his public ministry was over 2,000 years ago, but is very well alive in, in our world today. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and we hope that you've learned more about Jesus as a man today, and uh, we hope that you join us as we continue to go on this virtual journey, right? Yep. So let us finish uh, where we began by, by talking to Jesus, the living God, right? Yep. So in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for letting us be a part of this virtual experience so that we can learn more about you and the great love that you have for us. Help us to know that you are more than an influencer, that you are alive and impact our lives on a daily basis. You want to be a part of each and every one of our lives. Help us know that you are walking with us, that you are ever present with us each and every day. Help us to learn more about you so that you can impact everything that we do in our lives. As we all join in praying the beautiful glory be prayer together. Glory be to, to the, the Father, Father to the Son, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, Spirit as it was in the beginning, beginning is, is now, and ever shall be, world without God. end. Amen. Amen. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Jimmy D, session one done. You betcha. Thank you so much for joining us. Legends, you know, great legend. Cannot believe I was sitting this close to the legendary Jimmy D this whole time. Go, God, go. And we'll see you soon.